Hey everybody, it's Steve with Sky194 and appreciate you taking the time out of your day to stop by and visit and check out my video. And we're here at Zanboard in the USCP server. I'm in the Huracan. Just kind of jumped in it last second. Stay double fire. Got Antonio on the pole. I'm outside pole. Got a good crowd. Todd's in here. Driscoll's in here. A few people I've recognized. See if I got. I've definitely changed the setup a bunch from the other one. Just things I've learned, things I know it likes. The Huracan, just hopefully it'll be better, but I'm sure there's things I need to adjust. I'm trying to find pace. Of course, there's no pit stop, so that's going to be tough. Antonio is always tough. Green light. Go, go, go. That blue in Antonio's car is really pretty. Nope, oh, he's off. Car on the left. Clear on the left. turn I'm not happy with right here. Not, I don't have this thing balanced the way it needs to be. Oh, the track's green also. It's not too bad. The track's green, so...
better lap. And... Track of three. <laughs> Definitely slick. better later. Motec adjustments right before the race. <laughs> Still trying to get things dialed in. I'm sure, there's more to be done. That's not good. That's going to cause a problem for sure. Yellow flag in sector three.
Definitely need to be hitting these curves. <laughs>
pushing it hard, just trying to find a good pace. second. Todd's in here. He's in the BMW this time. He's running 
faster than me. He's running just about four tenths faster. Yellow flag, yellow flag, be careful. Uh oh. My temperatures. Try not to make a mistake with that sun in your face.
LFM. I mean, there was like 30 cars in a field. <laughs> Man, this place is really crowded. Super aggressive in the turns, just let it roll through the turns. on that one. Bias in it. Hopefully it'll be all right. <laughs> Hopefully.
about another second.
trying to be halfway consistent, but... About a half a second on me there. I don't want to end up just blowing it and so that's what I'm trying not to do.
seconds. right in on me. Drive by Antonio coming all the way back up. I think he did a great job. That was a great race. Man, that was sweating on that one here at the end. He did a good job coming all the way back because he you know, made a mistake and then got kind of backed up in there and had to get all the way back there. So that was definitely a good one. Well, Todd finished fifth. Dunham was fourth. Driscoll was third. Uh, so Caesar was tenth. So with the BMW. So overall, just a fun race. Um, definitely need to find a little bit more performance, which I was running you know, faster. It was just that um, there's a few spots that uh, it's just lacking so I'm gonna go over the data again and work on it some more 
and uh, then we'll go over the setup together. Alrighty, well, that was a great race. Um, again, shout out to Antonio for just driving a great race and uh, putting the pressure on me. And uh, I was fortunate enough to pull it out. And um, just a great way to, you know, fight at, back up through the field and challenge for the lead. And uh, it definitely kept me honest, that's for sure. And um, so I changed a lot of the setup. Um, you know, it was, a good, it was a good setup using during the race. But again, I knew it needed some work even from the start. But uh, let's make a lap and then we'll go over a lot of things in the setup. Again, you know, you need to be as free as you can stand it going through here because you need to be wide open all the way through there. Now, I can, you can either go stay in fifth or sixth. I don't really, not the same either way, same mile an hour. So, I just stayed in fifth a lot. Great looking car. Great sounding car. This is bowl's a tricky part because you need to be free in there, but not too free as you know, especially as the tires wear, otherwise it'll come around. And of course this has always been these this S here is always slick. Especially this one right here, this left-hander, to me, is the slickest part of the track. So always trying to get the car to get some grip through there is always difficult. Definitely not a perfect lap for sure, but the car's solid. So 136.2, um, that's my fast for this session. And like I said, it was doing 156, almost 157 down the straightaway, but it's definitely doing all of 156, no problem. It just, it, you know, it's very consistent. I'll show you the timetables. You can see the consistency. I mean, this thing is just crazy consistent. I mean, there's, you can see some time there. That's about the same there, and that's about a tenth there. So, again, you know, it's, it'll run high 35s, low 36s, and that's with the race fuel load. I mean, that's with, you know, 80-something liters. I mean, I'm positive that, uh, you know, if this is a pit stop and you had to get tires halfway through the race, you know, you'd be down in the 35s for sure. Um, which, you know, that's where you need to be. So, again, I mean, I would like to see, I would like to, my goal would be like to see it about another two or three tenths faster um, with a full, you know, with a heavy fuel load. Um, but it's not far from it. And like I said, I'm, I'm really trying to keep a, a good base and drivability. And I'm going to give you some suggestions and see what you, you know, might be, uh, it might be able to pick up a little bit depending on your driving style so we'll go over that but you can see all these here i mean you're all in a couple tents from each other here so it's really consistent uh, and the car just felt really good um but again i did change it a good amount so we got 24 3 left front 24 6 left rear 26 1 right front and right rear the toes a negative 0.1 with the camera at negative 3.7 on the left and negative 3.5 on the right and the caster at 10.2 um, the toe on the rear is a negative 0.15 with the camera at negative 3 on the left rear, negative 2.9 on the right. Now here, um, from the race, the toe, I think I took some of the toe out, uh, some of the negative toe out, just to keep these front tires. This left front just takes an absolute beating. So I took that out, and, and, I, and I think it helped a lot. And the, other than that, took a little bit of negative camera out of the rear, but the front, I think I left the same. 
I did try a couple different things, but I went back. Uh, electronics are three and four and one. Of course, fuel, I had 80, 83 liters, which is more than I started in the race. The race, I just had 70, no. Uh, no, I had 80, 80, 81 or two. So about the same. Yeah, about the same as I had in the race. That's right. Um, of course, you can see, uh, as far as the wear, really, really good. Um, the left front takes a, an abuse, and it's still only a little more than the rear. And on the right side, it's exactly the same. So I'm really happy with the wear. I'm really happy with that. Lambert, and for the Lamborghini. And, of course, any roll bars, four on the front. 55 for the brake bias. Steering's all the way down. Springs are 190,000 on the front with a 900 bump stop rate and a five bump stop range. And on the rear, the springs are 164,000 with a bump stop rate of 700 and a bump stop range of 20. Any roll bar is five and preload on the diff is 60. Now here, I did change a few things. You can go down to 54, which I did not do that during this, but you can go down to 54. Shouldn't be a problem um, you know, later on to kind of help the car rotate. Um, I'm sure there's some more time in this bump stop rates and ranges. I probably could mess with that some more, and that's pretty much the same as the race, and so is the springs. Really feels good and consistent. Um, and, of course, the track was, you know, started green and then switched over. So even from all that, I, I just wanted to keep it because it's a really good base for all track conditions. Now, the any roll bar and the preload on the diff, now that's what I want to really talk about. Um, I did change that. I took a click of both out. So basically took one click any roll bar out and one click of preload on the diff. So this is what I would suggest if you want to try it. Um, because I I'm kind of I might try it even sometime in the future, but it's I'm kind of split between this and doing it the other way. Um, you can add a click of this and add one or two clicks of the diff and try it and see how you like it. Y you might like it. Um, you know, it really comes off the corners good that way. But you know, again, down in that bowl area, sometimes it has a little bit of an understeer issue there. So you know, you might have to even give another. And click on any roll bar or you might have to just go one click on the diff and not two so again something to mess with something to try and see how you like it um, but it does give some really good stability coming off the corners so um, but I kept it at that and took some of the you know the diff out so that's what I kept it at shocks we got 14 16 31 and 17 on the left front and 11, 16, 32, and 18 on the right front. On the left rear, it's 16, 7, 20, and 5. And on the right rear, it's 15, 7, 19, and 4. So a lot different, but I mean, this track has got some really serious, um, you know, one in a million turns type things where you have a lot of load on one side, not on the other, and that, and vice versa. So, I mean, so you're going to get a lot of crazy shock settings. But I did a lot of adjustments in here. Um, they are pretty close. I'm really, really happy with it. Again, probably two or three times since the race just to, you know, keep up on it and get it just as fine-tuned as I can. So I think it's actually working a lot better now than it was in the race. It's mainly softened up some in the front in different areas and, uh, and in the rear. And I think it helps it be more compliant. Uh, Arrow got 56 in the front, 64 in the rear with a seven rear wing and a four and a four and a brake ducts. And the front arrow variation is a 4.5 to the positive. Now in, in the race, I only had three and threes because it was colder and I forgot to open them up back when the race was and I had it qualifying and I messed up and that's where I was having the issue. If I would add it four and four, I could have pushed a little harder or never had any tire heating issues, but that was my fault. I just got lucky I could, was able to hold on and, and uh, hang on to it. But as far as the rear wing, there's a big, big difference in this. I had a nine rear wing in the race. So I wanted to get the car a lot more free and a lot more rotation. So I gave it a seven. Now, as far as mile an hour, I don't think it makes maybe one mile an hour down the straightaway, maybe. I don't think it's that big a difference, but it does help it free it up as far as you know understeer and um just keeps it especially that last corner i want it as free as possible going through there so you can be pinned and 
basically just go there without having to crank a lot of steering into it. Because if you're cranking a lot of steering, even though you're pinned, you're burning the left front. Plus, you're just scrubbing speed. So you need it to rotate through there as free as possible. And that's how you carry a lot of speed down the straightaway. It probably could use a little bit more. And that's where I was talking about the sway bar. But um, this is as much as I want to go with to keep it still compliant as far as over a race stint and through the bowl and all that. So I still think it's a really solid setup, really good base. And uh, I hope you give me a thumbs up and subscribe. And, of course, a link to this setup will be in the description. So you can get it from there uh, if you want to get it that way. And, of course, I have a PayPal link down there also if you want to help support the channel also uh, that way. Anyway, whether you like him, subscribing, PayPal, all those I really appreciate. Thank you so very much. And uh, I sure hope you get leave me any feedback or comments as I love talking to all my uh, r sim racing friends. And I hope you come back and visit again really soon. Y'all take care. See ya.